Hey, Justice Warriors, good afternoon. It is Tuesday. It's June 27th. It's almost 2.20 on the East Coast, meaning that it's about 11.20 back there in Idaho. I know we are all waiting to see what happens with the court hearings this afternoon. I believe those are going to take place at 4.30 Idaho time. I'm going to ask you to share, subscribe, ring your notification bell, and hit that like button if you'd be so kind. I like to start all my videos with my disclaimer. Everything I say is simply my opinion, simply for the sake of conversation. I always hope to open up a discussion and to become educated, become more educated. <laughs> just educated at all, please. Um, I like to try to learn something. I hope that others find value in my videos. And if you do, then thank you for the honor and the privilege of joining you in that process. All my videos are made specifically for YouTube and that's an entertainment platform. So, wow, this Idaho 4 case is just pretty crazy, is it not? We've got um, just some super, super sad situations with the deceased. And then we've got the alleged unaliver that may or may not be guilty. So we are all trying to cool our jets and see what happens in court. The presumption of innocence is imperative for our democracy to work properly. So a couple of things I wanted to mention today, I found it very important to come on here to talk about the House of Cards. I feel like this whole case is a House of Cards. You know, all this stuff with the Queens and the Kings and the Jokers and the Jacks and the Ace of Spades. As I've said a few times before, Game of Thrones, it's pretty grisly. It seems like it's a game, a very scary game, a very serious game. It's power and control. So we've got Dylan Mortensen and Bethany Funk, right? We've got the two surviving witnesses that aren't witnesses. I just want to say, as somebody very experienced in inpatient psychiatric and outpatient psychiatric and crisis and commitment interventions and evaluations, I have wanted to say that in the event that these two witnesses were 100% innocent of any and all wrongdoing, they would very likely be overcome with grief and guilt, so much so that they would be not only non-functional, but prone to injure themselves prone to suicidal ideation, most likely needing hospitalization to keep safe and to keep sane. I mean, can you imagine being in a situation like this where your roommates are slaughtered and you're like asleep in the other room, allegedly, or awake in the other room or whatever? It's unbelievable. It's literally unbelievable. I literally don't believe it. So let's see what happens in court. But I did want to say Dylan Mortensen's father is Brent Mortensen. There's a Stanley Mortensen who's not only the prosecuting attorney in Kootenai County, but he also was sworn in this past October of 2022. I have no idea if Stanley Mortensen has any relationship, blood relative or acquaintance affiliation with Brent or with uh, Dylan, but even if he doesn't, and the name just happens to be the same, the date of him getting sworn in is very close to the date of these tragedies. Something to think about. Also, James Fry's wife, Julie Fry, was elected to be the clerk of court. I wanted to talk about a couple of things with Bethany and Dylan and going back to when Chief Fry said that they were out in the community separately on that Saturday night and they both got home about 1 45 in the morning out in the community 
really? Why won't you just say where? Why won't you just say they were out with friends? Who were they with? I guess you don't want to say out with friends because then people might be like, well, who? Because we know that these beautiful 21-year-old young women aren't going to be wandering around Moscow alone late at night on a Saturday night. They're going to be with people, whether that's boyfriends, girlfriends, just friends in general. Um, but why would Fry be so specific to say out in the community? It almost makes me think that maybe they weren't out at all. Maybe they were home. Or maybe they were just at their sorority, right? Or that frat party. Excuse me real quick with that. All right. So anyway, it's just so annoying, the language. Out separately in the community. Bizarre. There's a lot of bizarre elements of this case. So... Have you ever heard of being epstein Or is it something just me and my people talk about? So I have this little thing, like you can be epstein you can be copacod, or you can be coburgered. So being copacod would be, you know, the SWAT team, right? epstein would be allegedly hanging yourself in jail. Um, Maybe a, maybe a homicide made to look like a suicide, maybe a, maybe an escape made to look like a suicide. I don't know. There's a lot of different theories out there with what actually happened to Jeffrey Epstein. I think it's pretty likely that he was already deceased when he hung himself, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> so anyway, being Epstein, Kopakad, or Coburgerd. So... Being Coburgered, I just came up with this this morning. I really wanted to share. Made to look completely stupid and insane. Like, really, he was a genius. We've heard this again and again from other geniuses, right? He was extremely smart, the smartest guy in the room, resented by many, I'm sure. And he was working or wanted to work with the Pullman PD to assist them in maybe like a better way of gathering electronic data for their rural cases. Is that right? With his assistantship that he applied for and interviewed with Chief Jenkins last April 12th of 2022. So he had an interest, at least on paper, in helping collect data, electronic data, and improving ways of doing that. So wouldn't it be ironic if that very thing was what he got nailed on, especially if it's a setup, especially if it's a setup. I can't imagine that it's not. I can't imagine that this genius would screw up like that. So I do want to mention that I caught a Zav girl right before I came on to record this, and she had discovered that Koberger had been arrested eight years ago for stealing his sister's iPhone shortly after he got out of rehab. So a couple things about that. First off, and something that Zav pointed out in her video, is that that's eight years ago. So that's also right around the same time as that weird tickling date, right? With the pretend barfing to get out of it. Um, so it was a bad year. But anyway, he's had nothing but traffic stops for the last eight years that we know of. And I also wanna add, was he profiled? He got stopped a lot. I mean, we know he got stopped twice in the same day in Indiana on December 15th, but we also know that he got stopped in Pullman in October, the body cam footage that we've all seen with the female officer. We know that he got stopped in August in Moscow, allegedly for not wearing his seatbelt, and maybe one or two other traffic infractions, but that's a lot. Just the August and October, just the twice in those two months, that's unusual. It just makes me wonder if he 
was being profiled for whatever reason. Maybe they knew him. Maybe they knew of him. Maybe they just wanted to kind of, you know, rattle him. I don't know. Anyway, uh, the last couple of videos, I've gone over the Bretts and the Brents. So I wanted to quickly delineate that again uh, because I screwed up too. <laughs> so Brett Boyd is the Wazoo sergeant who had the kill shot against Kopaka in the SWAT team incident. Brett Boyd. Brett Payne, we all know, is the lead detective on the quadruple homicide. We know Brent Kopaka and then Brent Mortensen. Now, I do believe that there's one or two other Bretts and Brents in this case, but those are pretty important ones. Um, so Quinn, we know Quinn is Dylan's boyfriend, and he says that he's never been to Moscow. I find that really hard to believe. And I don't know whose um, big truck it is that she's standing in front of in some photographs that she has posted on social media. I've seen the photographs. I've heard that maybe that's Quinn's truck, but haven't we all heard that maybe there was a big black truck driving around the residence of 1122 King Road that night? That seems to have fallen by the wayside, along with so many other things that have fallen by the wayside. So I'm just wanting to bring these things up because I think they could be relevant. And maybe that's why they keep falling by the wayside, you know, and leave no stone unturned, like examine it. If it's not relevant, examine it and rule it out, but don't just let it languish. That makes me think there's something to it. So was Bethany single? It seems like everybody else in the house was hooked up. Obviously, um, Dylan with Quinn, Zana and Ethan. Maddie and Jake, and then we've got Kaylee with her on again, off again with Jack D. And I don't know about you, but in my opinion, relationships like that that are on again, off again, are not generally the healthiest relationships, to put it nicely. But, you know, that whole thing is still sus, in my opinion. The whole thing with the dog is sus. The whole posting of Murphy all over social media and having a wish list and all this. Gross. Gross. Attention seeking much? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to wrap her up. I'm going to ask once again, please hit your like button and share, subscribe, ring your notification bell, s'il vous plaît. I'm going to say peace out. Sending you light, sending you love. Have a great afternoon. I hope we find out something, even good news, any news, something definitive maybe. It's all so ambiguous, isn't it? And ambiguity is just a word, but it is a tough thing to be in, in my opinion. So eat well, stay hydrated, eat your protein. Lots of fruits and veggies, especially your veggies. Get your exercise, sunshine, fresh air. Relax, be kind. Put your feet up. Work hard, play hard. And I will see you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. I super appreciate it.